Hello everyone, this is Ben over at ERP Connect, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing our payment plans extension within D365 Business Central. As always, the first thing you will need to do is go out to AppSource to download your free 30-day trial, after which you'll need to come in here into the payment plans setup and click Generate Demo Key. Also remember to add the ERPCC permissions associated with each application, either the user or the setup, depending on the user, as well as our permissions to common objects for all users. So with that, let's jump into a brief overview of why we created payment plans for customers and vendors. So recently, as I have been shopping, I've been noticing more and more that you can basically buy anything on credit these days. And more than ever, people you are buying from are giving you the ability to split your order over multiple payments or installments. And similarly, your customers are likely requesting that they can pay one bill over time. I even ordered a pizza last week and they asked if I wanted to split my $20 order over four easy payments of $5 a week for the next four weeks, which honestly I found funny, but nonetheless, it is possible. Now, I know my favorite pizza restaurant isn't using Business Central because these features are not readily available in Business Central out of box today, which is why we've created our payment plan extension, which now enables companies of all shapes and sizes to be able to split their purchasing and sales documents into installment payments. With that, we have five key features, which include the integration to the already existing payment terms in Business Central for a seamless experience, the ability to add payment plan terms to your customers and vendors to default on those orders and invoices, the ability to add payment plan terms to sales orders and invoices to allow your customers to split one order or invoice into multiple payments, as well as on the vendor side to do the same thing. Again, split one purchase order or invoice into multiple payments for your vendor. And then keeping this all on one posted document with either multiple customer ledger entries or vendor at ledger entries for tracking purposes and easy applications. So with that, we are ready to go into our payment plan setup page and we can jump right into the various options you have when setting up our payment plans extension. So here we have the payment plan setup and we like to keep it as simple as possible here. First, you're just gonna go ahead and activate the extension with that demo key. Like I mentioned, uh, after those 30 days, please feel free to reach out to us to purchase that full year license. There you can put the activation key in and it will enable you for that full 12 months. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do here is, of course, activate the extension. Then, if you'd like these comment lines to display on your sales orders and invoices in this first section, you can enable that here. So let's say I've got an order and an invoice for $900 split into three payments as an example. This would create four comment lines. The first being the text that we see here in our example, and then the next three lines under that would be the due date and then the installment amount for each uh, installment payment on our payment plan. Now, the next piece here we can enable, uh, it's gonna be the same exact thing, but on the purchasing side. So again, you can enable this and then you can add the comment lines to the orders and the invoices to indicate when each installment is due and the total for each installment. Whether the comments are turned on or not, the necessary customer ledger entries or vendor ledger entries will still be created, allowing you to apply cash individually to those various ledger entries while still maintaining the one order or invoice document, again, either with those comment lines lines or not, depending on what you select here. All right. So with that, the next piece we'll need to do is go ahead and actually add some payment plan payment terms that we can then utilize to either default on customers or vendors, or simply just use one off on any uh, sales order or invoice or purchase order or invoice. So the first thing we're going to do is come up here to our search and navigate to our out of box payment terms. So now that we're here, you'll see that we have a payment term already set up called 306090, and you'll notice that there's no due date, but rather uh, a date. If you come in here, we can click this dot, dot, dot. Uh, that will allow us to pop open our payment terms. Now, make sure that you leave the due date calculation here blank, as well as any of the discounts uh, in the next two columns. And when we click this, it will actually pop us into our payment plan installment term. Now, here you'll define the percentage of the total order or invoice and when that will be due. In this case, I have three installments. The first is due upon receipt, so 0D for today, uh, and that will be for 25%. Uh, after that, we have a 25% uh, coming due in 30 days. So again, 25 due upon receipt, 
25% of that total due after 30 days. And of course, uh, to get to our 100%, we've got a 50% payment here uh, after 60 days. So again, uh, here's where you would set all of that up. And we're simply just linking this to the payment terms that already exist from out of box. And then of course, you can use these on vendors or customers to default onto those documents, just like you would do in out of box business central. For these, you can have as many or as few installments as you would like. Again, in this case, I just did three, uh, but you could have two installments, perhaps 50% due up front and another 50% due in 60 days. In that case, again, you would just do 0D uh, and then 50% and then 60D and then another 50% and it would work the same exact way. Uh, I would also recommend checking out our advanced prepayments extension. Uh, if you have the need to take money up front prior to generating any sort of sales or purchase invoice or order, uh, our prepayments tool gives more flexibility flexibility around managing order prepayments uh, and also gives you the ability to do retainer or deposit style prepayments for your customers and vendors. All right. So now let's go back to the focus of the video, which is payment plans. Um, again, like I said, you can do two or three, like we're talking about now, or even five to 10 uh, installments with various custom percentages. The only requirement there, of course, is that they add up to hundred percent. If you were to come in here and try to do 55 and get out, yeah, it would of course tell you that it does not equal 100% and you need to go adjust it uh, again here after which you can click close and you'll pop back into our payment uh, plan section here. Now that our payment plan has been created, let's go give it a test run on a customer order. Uh, but first I'll show you how to default those payment terms on a customer, just like you would with out of box. So let's come out to the customer that we're going to use today. And I have set one up specifically for these payment plans. And if you just go ahead here and click on your payment plan customer and scroll down to the payments tab, we'll see just like in out of box business central, you can uh, default that there. It's literally the same exact field payment terms code that 30, 60, 90, as we just saw is going to default that payment plan or that installment plan. Anytime this customer creates an order. So with that, we are ready to go ahead and create a sales order. And we're going to do that directly from the customer card in this case. So just go up to new document and click on sales order for the next part of our demo to actually use these payment plans. All right, now that our sales order has opened up here, uh, I'm gonna switch this to 3-1 just to show you how easy it is when we're calculating the dates just to do that 0, 30, 60 on our payment terms. So everything will just be 3-1 here. Uh, and of course, those dates are going off of the, the posting date, uh, but we'll just make it simple and put everything as 3-1 here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an item on our order. Let's say it's this Microsoft Surface 8. Uh, this is a pop-up note from our advanced notifications tool. I highly recommend checking that out as well. Uh, I'm just going to put this in Dallas. We're going to sell one of them and let's just do 1200 to make it easy. So it's, it'll be 300, 300, 600 in this case. Now, the other thing I should probably mention uh, is if I come down here into that 30, 60, 90, uh, if I click on this, I can quickly review what my uh, installment plan or payment plan calculations are going to be. Uh, if you need to, you can change these on a one-off basis on the actual order without having to create a new payment term. So let's say uh, we're going to give this customer something special and that first payment uh, isn't going to be due actually for 10 days. It'll still be that 25%. Um, and again, if you needed to add more lines or change the percentages here, uh, you could absolutely do so. So now I'm going to have 10, 30, 60, again, still 25, 25 and 50. And after that, we're good to go and actually post this. Uh, I talked about prepayments earlier. I believe I do have a prepayment on this customer. So I'm just going to exempt them from the prepayment so that we can put it on their AR terms. But if you're not using prepayments, don't worry about that. It will just process like normal. And at this point, I'm just going to post it. I'm going to do the ship and invoice like normal. And at this point, it should create us our document. And I'm just going to view that invoice real quick. And like I had mentioned earlier, uh, we can see here we have that Surface 8. The total for the posted sales invoice is still going to be that 1200 
but now what we're going to see here is we've got uh, $300 due by 311, uh, another 300 due on 331, and then 600 due on 430. So again, because I updated that on a one-off basis, our first payment uh, is now not due for uh, another 10 days. Uh, then our first payment's due after 30, and then our final payment is due after 60 days. So with this, that is how we're going to view it on a posted sales invoice. This is exactly what your customer uh, would get when you send it. Uh, if you're going to use email sending again you can do that from invoice and statement delivery here so when i post that it's automatically going out to your customer and then the beauty of it is once they start to pay that if i come out to my customer ledger entries here real quick we can see that as they pay that 300 that 300 and then that final 600 let's look for our most recent uh, entry here all right, perfect. So I'm going to filter down to that invoice number. You'll notice now we have three customer ledger entries, right? The posting date was 3-1. We've got the same invoice number for all three of those. It created three separate entries for us. Uh, the sales is going to be captured here on the uh, first line for the first one due. So let's sort that by due date. We've got the $1,200, uh, 300 due on 311, 300 due on 331, and then 600 due on 430, 2024. So with that, uh, everything else in terms of applying cash via a cash receipt, uh, deposit, payment reconciliation journal, however you're doing it, will be exactly in line with out-of-box business central functionality and will allow you to put each of those payments directly applied to which payment plan portion came from that um, sales order invoice. So that just about wraps us up on how to set up and use our application from start to finish. Please note that the same exact steps can be used on the purchasing side for your vendors, uh, allowing uh, you to pay them in installments if they are okay with that or if they allow that. Of course, that have to be in your, your terms with them, but you can absolutely do that on the purchasing side as well. So just as a quick recap from the video, I want to, uh, again, highlight the five key features of payment plans, which include integrating to the already existing payment terms in Business Central for a seamless experience, adding uh, payment plan terms to your customers and vendors to, again, default on those orders and invoices, adding payment plan terms to sales orders and invoices to allow your customers to split one order into multiple payments. Same thing, adding payment plan terms to purchase orders and invoices to split an order uh, from your vendors into multiple payments. And then keeping one posted document as we saw with multiple customer ledger entries or vendor ledger entries for the tracking and the payment application purposes. So thank you again for tuning in to another one of our Business Central Toolbox tutorials. If you learned something helpful today and want to stay up to date on all of our most recent content, I would recommend hitting the like and subscribe button below. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to our team at any time. Thanks again for joining, and we look forward to helping you optimize Business Central with our Business Central Toolbox.